<clears throat> hey everybody, uh, it's your friend Carson here. It's been quite a while since I did one of these videos, so I figured it was high time to do one. Um, yeah, so I've been thinking about, oh, what can I do, what can I do, and I've just, I've overthought it. And, uh, you know, th this last year has been a little bit of a challenge for me, so uh, trying to get back up on that horse and, uh, you know, share with everybody and say hey to everybody and all my friends in this group and and I guess in, in the world in general. So um, anyways, I decided today that I was going to go ahead and uh, do a little demonstration about uh, making a little mini rig. I just got into making these and um, uh, they've been a lot of fun. I had a, a friend of mine uh, who I saw this summer, uh, he helped me out and gave me a couple pointers and I was thinking about it, and I, I haven't really seen that much online about making these things. Um, so anyways, and before I continue, I know I've got the crazy hat, you know, meow. Um, I got this hat while I was in Pittsburgh, hanging out with a, with a bunch of friends, Chad and Topher and Spinny and uh, Matt and other Matt, and uh, we were walking through Pittsburgh, and I saw this on the rack, and I'm like, I gotta have that. I've been doing crazy hats for these videos, so. Um, this is a crazy hat, you know. There. Um, so I got an example of what I'm gonna make. I don't know. The phone just popped up, said Facebook wasn't responding, so I'm not sure if, if you guys are seeing me and it's working. Just uh, drop a comment for me. I'm not quite sure if it's working. Um, so anyways, this is a little mini that I made a little, you know, maybe last week. It's got a amber purple honeycomb base. And uh, the way I've been doing these is um, a separate down stem, right? So make the, make the weld here and a 14 millimeter joint, I'm making a 14 millimeter joint. And that way you can drop in a down stem like that. And that seems to be a pretty good way to make these things. Um, so anyways, it'll, it'll look something like this. I do have an attachment ready <laughs> for it, and it's a 45. So anyways, so that's kind of what we're aiming for today. And this video might take a little while. Um, and generally speaking, I, you know, for these videos, I, I find it's kind of a good time to think about uh, different things to talk about. And, you know... I'm into philosophy and, um, you know, kind of thinking about things and um, hopefully in a little bit of a deeper way. So I was thinking about friendships and, and stuff like that. And, you know, maybe we could get into some of that. And um, I've just been, again, uh, you know, I try to stay in a place of gratitude in my life. But especially, um, you know, when it comes to friendships, I'm just one of the most lucky guys. I'm, I'm convinced of it. Um, so it's 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 great, and it's a it's a good thing for me to think about. Um, I know my intros can be a little bit long. This will be uh, posted to YouTube afterwards, and when um, you know, so the intros are a little bit long sometimes. Uh, just a quick rundown of tools that I'll be using specifically for this job. I've got a 14 millimeter female uh, ground joint forming tool here. Um, I think Griffin Glass makes this. I got it from uh, Mountain Glass. Um, the tube I'll be making will be in uh, cobalt blue, 35 millimeter. Um, to make our joint, I have some 16 millimeter, I believe. Um, and then I've just got uh, another a ground joint to make sure and finalize it. This has a bunch of beeswax on it. I've got beeswax here sitting in a pickle jar lid. Um, all scungy and nasty, but it works. Uh, I've got reamers and, you know, various other glass blowing tools. Um, yeah, so if you guys have any questions or comments, you know, feel free to post them. Um, I've had problems in the past with the, uh, with the video sound. Uh, so if you guys are having a hard time hearing me or if you could just drop a comment and let me know if it's, you know, audio, audio quality, if it's a 10 out of 10, an 8 out of 10, uh, that would be great. So I did go ahead and take the liberty of, hold on, let me just get this all 
Yeah. Oh. <laughs> next reason of, of prepping up my blanks. And so I am ready to go. Let me grab that blank out of the kiln and we'll get it started. Alright, so this blank is on a piece of 12 5 tubing and it's oh about five inches long. There'll be a little bit of waste in this, but that's okay. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull down a section from about here to here and that's going to become my neck. Once I do that I'm going to create a Maria uh, as well. So let me just make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Just angle this a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. So another Facebook Live video. Yeah, I hadn't done one of these in a while. I, uh, you know, sometimes I kind of go through it and, you know, sometimes I don't feel like being sociable or talking or whatever. And, um, so it's just been a little while since I did one of these. So I'm just plumbing it up to the back side of this thing and, uh, and go ahead and pull this down a little bit. Yeah, so I'm heating up like that top third of this blank that's closest to the uh, closest to my blow my blow tube here and uh, you know basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a smaller tube smaller diameter tube um, on this larger tube so I went to AGI this summer and uh, you know I've made so many good friends up there and um, as I'm, I'm getting there, and it's a camping thing, so you know we're getting camp set up, and um, this this woman walks up to me and she says, "You're the guy from the Facebook videos. Those are really cool." And I thought to myself, "That's really cool. Like somebody actually got some." And she's like, I, "I just get so much out of those," and I'm like, "Well, that's great. You know, uh, I know I've been super super fortunate in my in my uh, glass blowing career to just have." A village of glass blowers around me, and um, it's just really important. Um, anyway, so that's kind of where we're at, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'll push my Maria uh, somewhere right about in here. So that's one of the things that got me thinking about friendship as I was kind of thinking about doing another video. It's like, you know, I, uh, I got so fortunate when I, when I first started blowing glass. I, I, I have a really good friend of mine that was, has been a glass blower for many years and he introduced me to a bunch of glass blowers here in Atlanta. And uh, and then you know those those guys became my friends, and uh, and so on and so on, and uh, that's one of the ways I was able to uh, to get into into this craft. So I'm just super grateful for it. And you know, there again, uh, as we all know, on on the torch top. Group. This is being live streamed to Torch Talk. If you're catching it on YouTube, um, the you know the outpouring of love and community in our you know our extended glass family, it's huge. Um, it's incredible. Uh, and my understanding is it really hasn't always been like that, you know. Um, but now it is, and that's that's amazing. And I just feel so grateful to be a part of it um, and so grateful to have so many teachers, you know, and everybody can teach me something. Um, yeah, so, so that's, you know, it's a big deal to me and uh, I think for me anyways, it's, it's important to, uh, to try to give something back 
to our community. Um, even though I'm not a master, I wouldn't consider myself a master glass blower uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I uh, I know a little something about a little something, and you know, hopefully, maybe somebody can can get some use out of it. Um, and if not, you know, what did it cost me to do this? A little bit of time, nothing really. You know, a little bit of internet. Um, so it's great. It's really wonderful. So, anyways, what I'm doing right now is I'm I'm prepping this blank up to uh, to get it ready to coil pot some color onto it. So I've got the end of this tube open, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, this is a stick of uh, just amber purple, and uh, I'm going to coil pot around. If you guys aren't familiar with coil potting. Um, it's, it's a method in which you can kind of create a section of tube or a whole tube in color by using a stick of color. It's the exact same thing uh, that you did when you were a little kid and you were, <laughs> you were, you were making a, a long snake in, um, in pottery class and you want, you want to make a little pot out of it. It's the exact same thing. Um, so it's kind of important at this point that I use um, a fairly oxidizing flame with this amber purple. Uh, I don't want it to strike out um, right at this moment. I mean, it's going to strike a little bit, but I really don't want it to strike a whole bunch uh, because what will happen is it, between me having to coil pot this color and then um, even it out and apply apply dots to it, blow it out, apply dots to it, and it's um, it'll overstrike and it'll become muddy, and uh, that's not something I really want. Um, generally, what I do at the very last step is I will flame strike uh, my amber purple honeycombs uh, and I'll just kind of gauge it as I go to see you know where where the color is can I get I really like the purples that you get out of amber purple um, so I'll, I'll see where my purples are at I'll see where the depth of the honeycomb is and um, and I'll, I'll kind of go from there uh, you can also strike this color in the kiln, if you were wondering. Uh, I believe a, a good striking temperature is somewhere in the range of 1150 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so, you know, if you were worried about overstriking in the flame, you could always run your kiln cycle uh, at around 1150 for, I don't know, 20 minutes, check it, you know, see what it looks like, um, pull it out, whatever, and uh, and in that way you can kind of control the strike on your amber purple. So anyways, I'm probably using oh, about half of this rod, maybe even a little bit more than half. Since I've got such a large blank, I, I need to make quite a bit of uh, tubing on the end for myself. So, yeah, so that's the coil pot, and it did strike out some. Anyway, so I've got the blast it with a pretty oxidizing flame at this point. And now the goal here is, is to really take that coil pot and really get the wall weight even. Um, generally, my videos, I've, I've tried to kind of help the, the newer people in our community with these videos. So I apologize if I'm telling you guys something uh, that you already know. Um, I see a lot of people really struggle because they don't have any teachers. So one of the intentions behind these videos is to 
to really try to help that new person out. Um, uh, somebody asked which GTT I'm using. This is a Mirage. Um, and you're very welcome. Uh, I appreciate uh, everybody's, you know, uh, support in doing this. I think it's great. Um, so anyways, let's see. I'm, I'm kind of, it's a little bit lumpy right now. You guys can't see. And I just puffed it out a little bit. Got to kind of wait for a second. Let that, let that heat even out. Um, since we're not using the brushy flame, even though this is hollow, it can be a little bit challenging um, to get a nice even heat. But it's really important to me with this color to not over strike it. Um, and after you put in so much work trying to get, you know, trying to get the thing made, you know, you don't want a mud, I don't want a muddy ass amber purple base. Um, so. Okay, so now you see where we're at. We've got kind of a dome shape on the end of this thing, and the wall weight is pretty good and even. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blast the crap out of this, this cap that I've created. And I um, actually need to make it a little bit more oblong. But I want this thing to be smoking white hot. Um, and then as I get it white hot and I get it to where I want it to be, um, I'm going to blow it out, and I'm going to blow it out super thin. Um, and it'll be kind of like a light bulb shape. This is now, this is pretty paper thin, guys. And so you tell me, um, it's pretty paper thin. I mean, you can see me through it. Um, so I'm going to start dotting this. And I usually dot with, uh, with three millimeter clear. Um, you can use bigger rod if you want. Um, I find that the, the size of the dots doesn't matter so much um, as the wall weight of this. If you want a nice deep honeycomb, make sure the wall weight on this is nice and thin. So, it takes a little while to dot these things. So anyways, maybe it's a good time to talk about friendship. I was thinking about uh, you know, I don't know how, how often you guys think about your your early, early childhood. I don't think about it that often, but I was thinking about my early, early childhood and uh, some of those very first friendships and, uh, you know, the concept of friendship. You know, what makes a friend? Um, why do we, uh, why do we get... Why do we get some people and not others? Why are some people our friends and not others? And that's a really interesting question. I think there's definitely something to be explored there. Um, I have, I had two really good friends when I was a little kid, like five, six, you know, three, four, five, six, and um, I mean, we were basically inseparable. We called ourselves the Three Musketeers. And we, we had watched the Three Musketeers, that movie, and, and when they go, huh, 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 <laughs> you know, that was our thing. Um, but yeah, we were complete, we were pretty inseparable. Um, and, you know, it's really interesting now. Um, you know, I still love those guys, and uh, I still think about them fairly often. Uh, you know, but those first friendships, you know, um, I think what I learned in those is, you know, that a friend can, can be trusted, that a friend, you know, 
is somebody to have fun with, to enjoy their company. Um, and, you know, a friend gets me, you know, and I, and I like that. And then I start thinking about, well, what makes me a friend? What makes me a good friend? You know, I think a big part of it is listening to people, showing people love. You know, this idea of agape love um, is, is really crucial. Um, and agape love is really a love that, that demands nothing in return. Um, in other words, I get to love you for exactly who you are in this moment, period. Um, and that, to me, is one of the most powerful things in the, in the universe, you know. And so it's very precious. When I have a friend that shows me agape love and I'm able to show them the same, it's, it's amazing. It's one of the biggest blessings um, in the universe. And I try not to take it for granted, you know. Um, I had a very best friend uh, who I called my brother who ended up dying tragically in a car accident when I was about 18 years old. And uh, it really affected me in a very profound way. Um, I, I don't know why it happened. I know that um, after, after that, uh, I had a real hard time understanding why the universe would do something like that, or, you know, if you want to call, call it God, or if, if God had anything to do with it. And um, it was really tough. But you know, nowadays, I know, you know, partly through that experience, just how fortunate I am to have the people who are in my life today, in my life. Um, and I try, I try not to take those people for granted, you know. And sometimes it's hard. All right, so there we are. There's our uh, start of our honeycomb. Uh, somebody asked where I'm located. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, so now what I have to do is I'm gonna go way out here in the flame. You guys not, might not be able to see it, but I have to warm this thing back up and uh, condense it down. So I don't know why this phone is freaking out. It keeps saying that Facebook encountered the problem. So I don't know if you guys are, if it's stopping and starting uh, the video when it does that. So if you guys could just let me know. All right, so here we go. We're, we're getting this thing condensed now. Try not to let it go too long on us where we're at, maybe get a, bit, a little bit of air, try to even it a little bit, okay, thank you for that comment, I'm glad it's a smooth video, yeah, in Gainesville, Georgia, huh, well, I know where you at, man, I know where you live, man, <laughs> I've been there, <laughs> out in the cut, out in the mountains, bro. All right, let me give a little more air. And if you guys are trying this, you know, don't worry too much if it gets a little bit floppy. They usually do get a little bit floppy, you know. <laughs> All right, so instead of condensing this all the way down, I'm actually gonna blow out this section right here, and that's gonna create my base. And then after I get done shaping, I'll, I'll drop the whole honeycomb part down. So that's kind of the current plan anyways. I see some friends are watching, you know, 
I mean, you know, I think anybody could be a friend, but uh, my buddy just tuned in. We had a good conversation about uh, soft glass stuff at API. Okay, yeah, we might have met at AGI. Yeah, man, agape love, that's the jam, my friend. That's where it's at, you know, so. You know, and I try to remember that, because not always, not always are my friends, me and my friends, like, Perfect. You know, y'all go. You every, everybody goes through something with their friends. You know, and you know a real friend when you can um, go through something, come back, and still love each other. That's a friend. You know, so. We're gonna get this sucker a little bit bigger. I mean, it is a mini tube, but. All right, so that's kind of where we're at. I want that to be just a little bit bigger, maybe. Notice, if you're new to glass blowing, notice how I wait for a second before I blow on it. Um, and that really is to let the, let the heat of this thing even out. The other tool I forgot to mention that I'm going to be using is a swivel. Um, I got this swivel for my birthday. It's a fire kiss. Um, and that sucker is nice, man. I'm talking about, that's like the mother effing like I don't even know Maserati of swivels it ain't even like a Cadillac uh, you like the toolbox kiln yeah man I was making those for a second uh, might need to make some more uh, if you're interested I've got a whole video on my YouTube channel just about my toolbox kiln it's kind of an older video you might have to search a little bit for it but it's there if, uh, if you guys want to um, Feel free and subscribe. I link the YouTube channel down in the description of this video. Um, I'm up at like 84 um, subscribers. Once I hit that 100 subscriber mark, I think I'm able to get my own URL, so I'll be able to put it at, as cap last instead of those numbers and stuff. So, you know. Right now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm starting to form this beaker shape. Sometimes you gotta play with it, you know, you gotta kinda go back and forth, really try to, I've been trying to work on that taper, that nice even taper, it's, it's a challenge, you know, it really is, so, eh. Getting close though. and it back. 
gaming. Damn, this thing keeps saying Facebook not responding. Yeah. Alright. Just a little bit more shaking on this, this deeper suction here. propane uh, valve keeps getting stuck. Alright, that's good enough for government work for right now. It's still a little bit, uh, it's got a little bit of weeble wobble to it, but I'll be able to fix it uh, when I come back to it. I'm going to drop this, this base down now. Um, so that's what I'm going to focus up on right now. So again, I've got to have a really, really oxidizing flame for this. And uh, I'm going to focus the heat kind of on the end and uh, try to make the sucker collapse, which it will. It's not try to, it's, it's it'll do it. I use my toolbox kiln quite often. Right now I have a different kiln. It's an Olympic garage door style kiln. Uh, and it's, it's off on the other side of me so you guys can't really see it. But I do use my toolbox kiln very often. I 
have to get that in the rain. Now when you're pushing it, you want to close the end of the tube with your finger. That way it won't create a um, champagne bottle effect. Um, and if you ask me the technical reason why that works, I don't know. It's just the negative pressure. Thing. I have no freaking clue. But it, that's how it works. So. Yeah. Bam. Mamma, mamma. Alright, I'm gonna come back up to the can a little bit and just work on this shape just a touch. I'm not quite so happy with this can at this point, but we'll get it, we'll get it going. everything and it'll really come together um, it's hard to get them absolutely perfect um, and I've been talking and stuff so uh, that is our honeycomb as of right now and if you notice it's not struck out right now um, and that's important next step is I'm gonna pick out the spot to pop the hole where I'm gonna where I'm gonna weld my joint so that's what I'm gonna do now and a lot of the times if there's a little bit of a weevil to it, if there's one side that's kind of a little bit more bulbous, that actually helps. So, you know, glass blowing, a lot of it has been about learning how to capitalize on my mistakes and learning how to um, recoup from my mistakes, learning how to, and then also learning from them, of course, you know, but, uh, really learning how to uh, almost utilize my mistakes um, to my advantage. So I turn my flame down and I'm just focusing on one, one area. Um, Okay, I don't know what happened, but um, you guys really didn't miss much. I think I'm live again. Uh, no, it wasn't. It definitely was Facebook. It, it shut it down for some odd reason. Uh, there's a question 
Uh, what are you using for your honeycomb? I'm using the amber purple color. I am back. So, um, only thing that uh, you guys missed is me finishing out that hole. Let me show you. So that's where we're at. That's where we're at on our can. Okay. Um, my next step, I'm put this back. Back in my kiln. And I this um, next step is to make my joint. So I'm going to do that next. Okay. So, like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm going to use some, what is that, 16 millimeter tubing. I already opened up the end of this thing. I'm going to use my joint forming tool. And this is a lens joint with a bunch of um, beeswax on it. So I found that, uh, oh, and the other thing I forgot to mention is I've got a flared open 12 millimeter blow tube that when I, when I get done forming this thing, I'm going to cold seal onto the front of it. And that'll, and that'll do, me, do me good. Yeah, we were talking about friendship before we were so rudely Facebook interrupted. Um, and agape love and all that stuff, you know. So, like I said, I try not to take take these fr my friends for granted uh, now, yeah, especially now. Um, you know, and it's, you know, friendships are are very important to me. Um, and I've always been one to have a lot of friends. I know some people, they don't have that many friends, but, uh, you know, I've, I've always been blessed to have quite a few friends. And, um, I don't know, uh, I think it's really nice, you know. Um, when, I'm, when I'm struggling with something, you know, it means I can, I can have a lot of people I can call. Okay, so I just kind of opened up this tube a little bit with my regular reamer. And uh, I'm gonna go in here with my um, with my joint forming tool, and I find that um, what I like to do with these, there's definitely a trick to it. You know, if you're struggling with making joints, uh, you're not the only one. I I don't struggle so much, although watch watch me mess this one right up. Um, but I find that getting this getting the uh, glass pretty hot. Um, getting it hotter than it needs to be and then cooling it and letting it cool like now it's cooling now I'm going to put my, my tool in there um, and uh, once once this tool gets a little bit warm and a little bit of beeswax on it, it I, I, I love this tool, I'm in love with it man, it really works good um, so it's, it's a brass 14 millimeter male joint forming tool and look at that bam man that that sucker is there and so the idea is to have the right taper um that's the whole idea um what's up what's up i don't i try not to call people out by their names because this goes on youtube but i see you man I, thanks for commenting um so the idea is to have this as the right taper and this thing is the right taper size so um, you know, it, I, I was getting hung up for a while, like trying to figure out how do these people make their, how, how do you make a joint? You know, it's like I never even thought of it. It's about having that, that correct taper. Um, and then beyond that, uh, notice I only use the top half of that joint it only needs to have enough meat there for it to grab onto you know um, so I'm actually ultimately probably only going to use the, the the top half of this taper that I'm that I'm creating for myself here so um, you know it's one thing about blowing glass is if you can think about something critically um, and really try to dissect uh, how something is made or why it works, um, you know, you're going to be all right at doing this, you know. Um, 
you know, it's like if you're mechanically inclined at all, I think it, it does it does tend to help. I have that part of me that's that's mechanically inclined. Um, sometimes I struggle with the more artistic side of what we do, but um, you know, I do have that mechanical side. Hey. Anyway, so that's pretty much it. Let me uh, double check the fitment of this thing uh, with my with my actual ground joint. Make sure that it's that it's gonna work. Yeah, let me use a little bit more. So, you know, and it's a matter of going, kind of going back and forth, playing with it, trying to make sure that, all right, that's, that's about good. And once we, um, once we weld it onto the actual piece, we might have to go back in and adjust it again. Um, so, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cold, cold seal up. Oh, and I'm going to tear it off about, I don't know, three quarters of the way down. I need to give myself a little bit, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit of glass to be able to, um, to be able to weld with, and I'm going to flare it a little bit too, but, uh, there goes my freaking, that one's done. I'll tell you what, you gotta respect the glass. The one reason that I uh, decided to wear this ridiculous, this particular ridiculous hat, um, was that it's actually been a little bit chilly here in Georgia recently. Um, not cold, cold, but chilly enough to, to wanna put on like a stocking cap. So anyways, I got it cold, cold uh, sealed up to the top of this joint. I'm going to use a little narrow flame here, and I'm just going to come down about, like I said, about three quarters. To the way down, and I'll remove this from the two. So that's where we're at. Take my tweezers. I'm just kind of picking the bottom side of this thing open. Okay. All right. All right, and I'm just flaring the bottom end of this thing a little bit to where it will fit right on that on that hole that we made for it. Okay. So, uh, just a word of forewarning, guys, if I go away, my phone just told me I have 15% of battery life left. Hopefully, what we'll be able to do is get this joint welded onto this thing, and, uh, and you know, that, that might be as much of a video as we can make today. It's been, it's been over an hour. Um, might have to do a part two. We'll just have to see. Or maybe I can figure out a way to plug my damn phone in. Um, all right, so that's where we're at, right, right, and, and, bam, bam a lama okay, wipe off any kiln dust this thing has on it, I want kind of a brushy flame for this stuff, a little bit wider flame, 
I want to get both of the surfaces pretty hot. And this is literally just a straight seal, y'all. Uh, since I'm not, I, I put the down, I'm putting the down stem in after the fact. It's literally just a straight seal. And we want it to be a nice 45. Okay. So the trick is to have this lined up with the back edge, the back edge here. Alright, now I want a small pinpoint flame and I'm going to work this thing in quarters and I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this but um, you know straight seal is something that you know you, you get a lot of practice at as a glass blower and I, I had a hard time with it for a little while and one of my teachers said no just focus on one spot blast it like crazy and he said when you think you're done do it a little bit more and uh, sure enough that's that's really what what helped me get get that uh, the idea of a straight seal okay Alright, so I did the top. I did the top of this thing. It's not all the way done, but I'm gonna go down to the bottom. I gotta let the top cool. The top is gonna act as my bridge. And I'm gonna go down to the bottom here. got a little bit wonk on me. I'm uh, we're preoccupied right now, but that's all right. Well, you know, you just got to keep working with it. There it goes. Yeah, I wish I were here so you could actually see um, what's actually going on, but I'm, I'm watching the glass flow into itself. Um, and right now this doesn't look very good, but we're not done yet, so it's all good. So back to friendships, I, uh, I met some new friends this weekend. I went to a festival this last weekend and um, went up to my neighbors at this festival, my camping neighbors, and introduced myself. And it was three uh, college friends, three women college friends, and they turned out to be super nice people. You know, that's the other thing I have to remember is I don't know who's going to be my next friend. Um, and you know that's really cool actually I think that's just part of the uh, part of the fun of life you know um, 
you guys are making them though, so those guys were super nice and I got to hang out with them and it was just cool. straight on there. I think I'm going to go around this thing and just try to straighten it up just a little bit. Famous last words. You know. I'm not used to trying to do this on camera. check. You gotta look right through them and the light and make sure that there's no wrinkles or anything that'll make that joint um, a lot weaker. So I see one wrinkle in here. about as good as that one's going to get. Okay. Got that off. Now I'm just going to polish up this, this top edge of this thing where my, uh, try to even it a little bit on my marble here. And I'm gonna have, I know I'm gonna have to go in there with a, uh, with the reamer. So I'm gonna get it kind of medium warm.
that's it. That's got it. Okay. All right. So that's where we're at. Um, if I wanted to, I could put another. I could put an attachment on here. Um, I think I might do that. Yeah, I'm happier with that now. Okay. Well, y'all, it's been really fun. Oh, let me uh, let me just go ahead. Uh, what I'm gonna do? Last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strike out this base here. And since it's been out of the kiln for a while, I want to try to do this a little bit slowly. a little annealing flame. Just kind of let this thing come back up to some, some kind of temperature. Appreciate you sticking with me. Kitty Cat says meow. You know, what does the fox say? All that good jazz. Y'all are awesome. Uh, yeah. So, there it is. There it is. I wish y'all could see it in the real light. I guess you could kind of see it. Turned out nice. Uh, whenever I get done with this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick a, a attachment on it and I'll pull it off, but, uh, you know, this video is already super long, so we'll uh, we'll cover that in another video. Love y'all. Y'all are awesome. Thanks for being my friend. Bye.